Do you ever worry that by telling young people that, for example, homosexuality is wrong, that they might go on to then hurt someone? Of course, of course. Muslims can go about their daily lives and completely ignore these cartoons and it will have no impact on them whatsoever. So I do. To stand in solidarity with the people here and abroad. There are different ways that the government, the police and British institutions can deal with people considered radical. De-radicalise them, arrest them, control them, recruit them, silence them. So what does each involve? What works and what might backfire? I've been examining each of these measures, asking which are successful and speaking to the people subject to them. They have views that many consider offensive, but that's why they're called radical. The two people I've met feel they've been silenced, censored and misunderstood. They both had events repeatedly called off. Both have been accused of preaching hate. Anne-Marie Waters runs an organisation called Sharia Watch, opposing Sharia councils. She regularly criticises Islam. Calling Saudi Arabia the extreme fringe of Islam is like calling the Vatican the extreme fringe of Catholicism. Sorry, it just doesn't work. She's been described as a bigot and a racist. The University of West London cancelled an event she organised about alleged jihadist speakers. So we're doing an interview in a taxi. Uh, you didn't want to do it at your house? No, of course not. Because you're organising a Muhammad cartoon exhibition, is that right? Not just me, there are several, several groups involved in it, yeah. Why are you doing that? Uh, because if ever there was a time to defend real freedom of speech, it is now. Look, people are being killed all over the world over this. Is freedom of speech and drawing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad is that the same thing? Of course it is. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? You could have, you could advocate for free speech, but choose not to offend millions of people. Muslims can go about their daily lives and completely ignore these cartoons and it will have no impact on them whatsoever. So why do it? To stand in solidarity with the people here and abroad who are threatened, their lives are threatened. We need to utilise free speech. Mainstream journalists have already given up. Um, you know, cartoonists are, seem to be the last line of defence, so that's why it's important to do it with cartoons. What we want to do is shut down Sharia councils. That is one of the things we want to do. The other thing we want to do is defend our right to free expression and oppose Sharia tyranny. That's what we want to do. And haven't we, haven't we got the right to? But you won't get anywhere near that if you uh, blanketly offend all Muslims. Why do we, I, we get, <laughs> our support increases every day. We are a country which people have struggled for generations for women to be treated like human beings. I'm saying we ought to defend that. Do you consider yourself a radical? No, I'm just telling the truth. The, the, whole, of, the whole discourse, public discourse, has been so twisted and distorted that simply telling the truth about things or saying what you really feel about things is considered radical. I didn't make it radical. How can you not expect or feel like you're provoking violence somewhat by having this event in London. What you're essentially saying is that in order to avoid violence we should do what we're told by violent theocrats. No, we shouldn't. We should defy them and stand in solidarity with people all over the world, Muslims and non-Muslims, who defy them. If we cower down, they win and it gets worse and worse. You're inviting Geert Wilders. Yeah. He has tried to ban the Quran. He has compared the Quran to Mein Kampf. He's tried to ban halal meat. Is that about free speech? What he said was, if you want to ban freedom of speech, the Quran is full of anti-non-Muslim hatred. This cons why doesn't this constitute hate speech? And he deserves to be heard. And I'm getting a lot of support from people for inviting him, even people who don't like him. And I know myself, you can think I'm a racist or a bigot or whatever it is that you think, 
But I know myself, and I know that my motivation is to oppose tyranny and violence. The whole point is that there's still some hope, there's still some dissent. Shiraz Meyer is a former radical himself, a former member of Islamist organization Hizbut Tahrir. He's now a leading expert on radicalization. We live in a, in a very diverse, very pluralistic society where lots of people believe in lots of different things, very passionately. And that's the key to understand, that just as passionate as your beliefs may be in issues A, B and C, other people are believing in X, Y and Z just as much. Haytham al-Haddad is an Islamic scholar in London. He's also been called a bigot, but also a homophobe and a hate preacher. He's had talks at Kent, London Met, LSE, Amsterdam and Westminster universities postponed or cancelled. Some Dutch parliamentarians tried and failed to keep him out of the country. His remarks that have caused most controversy are that God hates homosexuals, that leaving Islam is punishable by death in the right circumstances, and that Sunni Muslims shouldn't marry Shias. Why do you think people find you so problematic? I'm just vocal about anything that I disagree with. My view about homosexuality, it is clearly stated in the Quran and it is obviously, I believe that it is wrong. If the media had uh, a fair presentation of my views, they will not single out those points. But you've stood in a classroom of young children and said to a group of Sunni children that they shouldn't marry a Shia and that's why people say you should not be allowed to speak. Okay, what's, what's, what's wrong with that view? So if someone came to you and said, I'm a Sunni, I want to marry a Shia, what would you say? Yeah, I said to him, well, I, I advise you not to, okay, based on, uh, first of all, I will ask, yeah, uh, don't, don't, okay, put that, you need to quote it carefully. First of all, I would ask, what do you mean by Sunni, what do you mean by Shia? We have to qualify that carefully. I'm just advising and explaining to him what will be the consequences. Do you think you get an unfair deal? Of course. I am very vocal against ISIS. Why didn't you report this? Why many media outlets didn't report this? Do you think you should be allowed to say everything you say in public? Don't misquote me. I won't. Every single one has the right to express himself. As far as he doesn't break the law, he or she doesn't break the law, and Secondly, as far as he or she does not insult someone directly. Do you ever worry that by telling young people that, for example, homosexuality is wrong, that they might go on to then hurt someone who was a homosexual? Yeah, it depends on how you say that. Do you worry about that? Uh, of course, of course, yeah. So that's why we have to be careful how to say it. Because, see... God we hates can't, homosexuals yeah, isn't very careful though, is yeah, it? Yeah, see, Which be, you've said. or Muslims have the right to express their views. Do you think people should be allowed to insult Islam? Uh, no, as people are not allowed to insult Christianity. They are? And people are, how? And Do those you think views, that the woman organizing Muhammad cartoon drawing event has the right to draw those so cartoons? So we need to, it is widely accepted in the Muslim world that homosexuality is a sin. You can't compare this to insulting the very Islamic symbol that, that is started and practiced just by very, very few people only recently. You can't compare between both. You know, as an intelligent man, that you absolutely insult people when you say that leaving Islam is punishable by death. And that is absolutely insulting someone. Uh, I don't know about whether that is defined as an insult. Now, I think that's insulting. Do you think your views are dangerous? If these views are dangerous, you wouldn't see thousands of Muslims living or millions of Muslims living peacefully in Europe. My children need to feel that Islam is really part of the European mosaic and not to be targeted all the time. Do you think you're a radical? Nope. Do you think some of your views are radical? Uh, not really. People are always trying to carve out a little bit of space for the issue that they feel for them is, is should be out of bounds. So for someone like Haytham, that's going to be you can't criticize Islam, you can't um, 
draw the Prophet Muhammad, for example. For other people, it's going to be, oh, you can't criticize this aspect of, of what, what I believe. It's having that sense of public debate, having the scrutiny in the public arena where weak ideas are able to be exposed, able to be challenged. And so individuals can see for themselves and make a judgment for themselves, because I think ultimately that's what it comes down to. They collaborate with the global banking system to bring masses of third world people into this country to replace, rape and murder our people. And my beliefs, yeah, I was thinking I've got, I've got nothing to lose and I, and I have a lot of to win. If I die, if they shoot me or anything, I'm not going to lose anything except my life. <laughs>